Welcome everyone, make yourself comfortable. For the next couple of minutes, we'll embark on a journey to the core. Thank you for joining me. Today, we will cover fundamental concepts about Maven, where we create the project for this series. In order to create the project, we are going to use Maven archetypes. Archetypes are just templates. There are templates for everything, for web application, Java projects, libraries, and so much more. In order to make use of Maven archetypes, we have to run the command mbm archetype column generate. We will be welcomed by an interactive interface. Let's search for quick start. By default, we are going to use the 98 archetype. Which one is that? It's the Maven archetype quick start. So let's use that one. We are going to choose the default value, which is the last stable version for this archetype. For the group ID, we are going to introduce this one. The artifact ID will be shopping cart, since that's what we are going to do in this series. And for the package, I am going to introduce this one. Now let's review everything we have typed so far. All is okay. Let's press yes. If we run the command tree, we can see what has been generated by the archetype. We have the directory for the project, the directory for the code, as well as the directory for the tests. Let's jump into the directory for the project. And now, in our IDE, let's import the new project that we just created. In the IDE, we are going to edit the Maven spawn file. You can see that we have a name for the project that matches the artifact ID. Let's change that in order to make it a little bit better. We don't care about the URL, so I'm going to delete that. There are several sections. For example, the properties one is an important one. These properties here are general purpose, so we are going to say that. The archetypes bring with it default dependencies that we are going to delete. In the plugin management section, we can define the plugins for Maven to use. The archetype has introduced already a couple of plugins to be used alongside with the versions. What we are going to do is to move all the versions into the properties section. This is good practice. Let's create a section here called plugins version. And I will use the new property here. Now I will repeat the same process for all the plugins in the plugins management section. You can see that all the version has been moved to the properties section. This is good practice. We can have all the version in a single place. Now, let's take care of the dependencies for the project. In order to do that, I'm going to navigate to Sonatype, which is a Maven package browser, and I will look for the unit bill of materials. A bill of material is a collection of artifacts alongside its version. So if we need several artifacts from the JUnit project, we only have to manage that once. I will pick the 5.6.2 version since it's the last stable version for JUnit. I will copy this. And similarly to what we have done in the plugins management section for defining the versions to use, we have to do the same thing for the dependencies. So we are going to create a dependency management section and there is where I'm going to paste what I copy in Sonatype. Since this is a regular POM, a bill of material is a regular POM, I have to define the scope as import just to use the definitions inside that POM into this one. 
and let's move this version into the properties section just like we did with the plugins so let's create a new subsection here called dependencies version but this is just only for managing the version for the dependencies now let's introduce the dependencies themselves we're going to split the dependencies into three categories compilation testing and run time now the dependencies that we are going to need from the JUnit project are the Jupyter API for creating the tests but this is not enough we also need the Jupyter engine for running the tests this one is going to be a runtime dependency since it's only needed in order to run the tests and not to compile them for the next and last dependency we need right now we are going to look for log4j bit of material just like we did with JUnit we are going to copy this and paste it in the dependency management section just like we did before we are going to define the scope as import similarly to the JUnit project log4j is split into the API and the engine. So we are going to use the log4j API as a compilation dependency and the log4j core as a runtime dependency. Like you can see, all these dependencies were introduced by the archetype, but they are very outdated. So we could update them one by one by hand, but that's very, very boring, isn't it? So I will show you the Mavis version plugin that we can use in order to deal with this. In order to use the Mavis version plugin, we are going to move to our terminal and type the command mbn versions column display properties updates. Maven will analyze the properties section of our pom file and will tell us which dependencies and plugins are up to date or outdated and which is the last version available. So in order to update them, we are going to run the command mbn versions column update properties. Now if we move to our IDE, all the plugins and the dependencies as well are up to date. If we go to our terminal, and visualize what is in the project's directory, we can visualize a version backup for our POM file. This is because the versions plugin allows us to revert the changes or commit to them. If we commit to them, we can see that the backup version is not long here. The versions plugin did something I didn't want to. It updated the JUnit version I want the stable version, so I will revert that. Now, let's configure the Maven Surefire plugin in order to use the Unit 5 specific reporting features. Let's go to the build section. You can find this configuration I just pasted in the description. Now, for the reports, we're going to go to the bottom of the POM file and create a new section called Reporting. First, we're going to configure the Maven's Surefire Reporting plugin. This is the one that will show the report for our tests. and we're going to configure the Maven's version plugin report so we can see the dependencies, plugins and properties that are outdated. I move this version into the property section 
just like I tell you, it's a very good practice to do this. And it allows us to handle all the versions in a single place. Plus, it's very easy to update everything in our project with the Maven's version plugin. And finally, we are going to change the compiler source and target versions to 11 because that's the one we are going to use. And now we have to fix the test that the archetype created because the archetype was using the unit 4 and we are going to use the unit 5. Now I want to show you the report. So let's move to our terminal, let's type mbn site column run. And a website will be generated with all our reports. If we navigate to this URL, we are going to see the reports. And this is the web page that get generated. We can see here information about our project as well as the report we just configured. And here are the reports we just configured. This is the Surefire report with only the one test we just fixed. And here are the versus plugin reports. As you can see, only the JUnit artifacts are outdated because there is a new milestone released. A link to the GitLab repository for this code can be found in the description. Now as you turn, create a basic main project of your own and play around with it. And most importantly, have fun. Thank you for joining me on my journey to the core. See you soon.